السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ یا سیدی وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ Does progress in meditation and the progress of the soul lead to weakness of the physical form? Progress in meditation and progress into the, uh, the soul lead to a weakness in the physical. In the, the answer is a yes and no but a yes. InshaAllah that anything we struggle in and anything we give our life to, the practices are physically intense. So years of praying, years of meditating, years of sitting on your legs, No doubt you're going to have difficulty in your knees and your back and all the different the physical ailments of growing older doing these practices. Imam Abu Hanifa would pray I think thousand rakahs every night until old age and, and got severe arthritis as a result of the salah and all of the strenuous activity that they put upon the physicality. So that's going to be a given that as we grow older our practices become more and more difficult. There's the another process of energy that as we build this energy connection and build this, this connection for the Divine then the carrying of burdens has its difficulty. And the different difficulties that come, physical difficulties and ailments onto the physical body then is in Allah's hands and is a way of service. So everything has a, has a, has a price that Allah want the servant to carry different difficulties and burdens and, and lights and energies and the physical being that we have is not strong enough at all times to carry that. So it can cause different physical conditions. So but it's a very fine line that the madad and the support, the shaykhs above they understand how much someone can carry and as their burden is coming the whole concept of the madad and the shajara, the chain and the golden chain is that we're locked on. So whatever's coming to the degree the shaykh can carry, the student can carry, his shaykh will carry, his shaykh will carry all the way up the chain the shaykhs will take that burden and they carry because they have no longer physical limitation. So that's why the importance was to establish at the first step the madad. So madad with the chain and to the connection through that madad they're pulling these burdens. Then there are those whom you can meet and they don't have a chain. And they say, oh we were doing healing, we do like this and after a short period of time they are ripped to pieces, their body is under attack, they have many, many physical ailments because yeah that wasn't supposed to occur, that's not the system that Naqshbandiya has. That Naqshbandiya doesn't encourage anyone to do healing unless they've been specifically authorized and trained on how to pass that energy, not to touch anyone because it's such a dangerous game that taking on people's uh, shayateens and jinns and all their difficulties is not something or anything that people want. But many people have been harmed by entering into that arena and not being prepared for what they're going to be dealing with. And that's, that's uh, evident in many places. You see many people are very, very sick because they took on too much and much more than they were supposed to take on and as a result has crushed them. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. Is fragrance have any reality? Because whenever we recite more and more durood or salam, we feel very beautiful fragrance in our home. Forgive my ignorance. Walaykum as salam, yeah we have many of these, many of these, these uh, 
questions, our, our resource is nurmuhammad.com. So you go www.nurmuhammad.com and there's a search tab, you enter into the search tab the phrase, the power of smells or reality of fragrance and all of these talks on that reality and, and the, the power of fragrance, the reality is that aromatherapy and fragrance therapy is angelic reality. So the reality of, of good smell and the reality of angels that accompany that smell and the, and the pious servants from the Buddha, Nujab, Nuqab, Awtad, Akhyar, Jinni wa Malaika that these, these pious servants they have the reality of fragrance. So when they're present the fragrance is filling the room, filling the prayer area or where we're passing by because of their reality is there and the purity of their reality. And that when the servant also purifies their heart, we said before that their heart is a filled with an ishq and a love and when they make du'a it's like a fragrance that's unique to their… what's that sen sense called that people have? Their pheromones. Everyone has a unique smell and every creature in nature they use that smell to know their family, to know their mother. So Allah created each creation with their unique fragrance, their unique pheromones and based on the level of purity and the level of the purity of their pheromone that is emitting from them. And that's the fragrance that they're emitting and the energy of that reality of that fragrance. Once they have the energy and the light of that, the angelic reality is that people can smell them. And that can be from their sandalwood fragrance and amber fragrance and their rose fragrances, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Could you please elaborate how the alif keeps escaping when we try to open it and not other letters such as lam, ha and others? I'm bewildered. <laughs> yeah, that nothing can, can contain, that Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known. So that Allah can never be known and as much as we try to move towards the understanding of the alif, alif keeps expanding. So that's why and then anywhere we look as we move into the reality of the alif always there'll be a representation of Sayyidina Muhammad there. That's the nature of what Allah has created by showing the huruf. The huruf is the science of Allah's realities that He would allow insan to enter into that ocean to understand. So instead of having complex discussions of how it's impossible to get to know Allah, Allah says, teach them just about my alif. If they could comprehend that then they'll understand. So as soon as they looked at the alif and alif is that Allah, the might of Allah they look and alif then opens and becomes alif, lam, fa. That was there they stopped, they understood that Allah will continuously open that and move away. That you cannot move if light is a constant, the speed of your light could never catch up to that reality. It'll be exactly where it has always been because that reality is ever expanding. Allah is, is expanding His creation. So nowhere in your creation can you fly out with your soul to reach to that point because Allah is continuously expanding. So as soon as you try to come to the alif, he expanded again, became alif lamfa. Then you say, okay, I'll go back to the alif again because alif became again alif lam fa. Because it's always a lam which is then the Muhammadan reality and fa there's always an opening, al-fata, al-fatiha. 
So Allah is continuously opening and you'll always see the lamb of Sayyidina Muhammad which is the lisan and the tongue of all realities. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, something due to our strong negative thoughts, action and speech knowingly or unknowingly, we create negative energy which affects us. How can we resolve it? Due to your extreme negative thoughts, you create a negative energy. And how can you resolve the negative energy? By creating a stronger positive energy. So that's why when we make wudu and salatul wudu to shield us from the negativity or sayyata amalina and from the sins of our amal, that as soon as we begin to make our salawats and our, all our practices, they produce a far greater positive energy to consume the negative energy. So they eat the sins. So as soon as you begin to make lots of salawats, lots of salawats and try to perfect your character, do good deeds for your character, give sadaqah at that time. We say if you do and continuously doing something bad, you should have a speed button for Fatima Zara helping hand. And as soon as you do something bad, do something good and then make your salawats, make your different uh, duruds, your different du'as from the app. The energy is far greater positive energy that consumes those negativities. And we have the, the Sultan of, of Tawbah from Mawlana Shaykh on the app, Tawbah to Abdin Zalimeen. They say if there's a, is a king of forgiveness du'a that is the king of forgiveness. Tawbah to Abdin Zalimeen and then you recite those du'as, the salawas, the duruds and create a more positive energy that will take away all the negativity inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah When and how do we say who? When and how do we say who? Who? <laughs> We say it in our breathing, we say it in the zikr, in the breathing practices when you begin to learn how to unlock the breathing, your initial state is Allah, 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 Allah. But when you're going into breathing practices it's just zikr of who? And we said before that when you start to try to meditate with the meditation of the breath you want to breathe out and breathe in with your zikr but that may be foreign for people so they go <sighs> exhaling all negativity and then inhaling. Later as they progress they don't even need to make that sound anymore they're just They push out their breath in a zikr and their zikr is khafi and Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's zikrs and, and associations were all khafi. And the only reason Naqshbandiya is doing loud zikr now is because these are the areas of dawah. But for Mawlana Shah Naqshaban everything was khafi, these were the, the masters of tafakkur and muraqabah and during his shaykh's life. When the shaykh would do a loud association, Mawlana Shah Naqshaban would leave to another area and do the khafi zikr to keep his connection with the shaykh because he found that the loud zikr was keeping him to be present in the association. When you are khafi you enter into a death state and leave the body. So this is all, these are the, all the trainings that Naqshbandiya specializes. If I'm sitting somewhere in an association I have to keep going, Allah, 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 well I have to be here to say Allah. I have to be very present with my body to be saying that. But if you are trained in this way the zikr starts, you enter like a state of death in which you're not moving and your zikr is on your heart and in your soul and they can begin to leave their body 
by not moving it. Any agitation on the body then they become very much present again and to be present with their body. So definitely the higher much more powerful is Mawt Qabl and Mawt, a state in which all the attendees are dead and they're doing their zikr through their soul that is immensely more powerful. But because we are in the lands of da'wah and these are the end days in which trying to even teach where they don't even accept the principles of Naqshbandiya anymore. <laughs> They think it's something strange, it's coming back to them like they, we've never heard these things before. But this was the depth of Naqshbandiya and what Mawlana Shah Naqshband was, was bringing. Imam Abdul Khaliq al Khujduwani was doing these zikrs and these practices underwater. And then his maqam in Khujduwan in, in Uzbekistan, there's a well in his zawiya, and this well of water, he would go into the well. And he would do all his spiritual practices submerged in the well because he said that as I'm submerged I have less influence from shaitan because their purity inside they push the shaitans out and as a result when they go into water the shaitans won't enter in to follow them. So meditation, talk about severe meditation they were doing it under freezing cold water in a well. So if they say there's no meditation in tariqah then they just… Uh, negated Mawlana Abdul Khaliq al Khushdawani and Mawlana Shah Naqshaban that they were the masters of this foundation and to a severe and an, an extreme reality of submerging and this is areas of freezing cold. You know the wells are not heated wells, these are very cold areas and regions. So when you talk about going into the well they're going into freezing cold water and submitting and probably hypothermic at that level of, of cold and doing their zikrs and their khafi practices, inshaAllah. That's why they're the masters of that region, masters of, of reality and the golden chain, there's not just a silver chain or iron chain, they're the golden chain that is a, a golden reality from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Naqshbandiyatul Aliyah, the Most High. Most High for what? Because of the depth of the reality that they entered into the Muhammadan heart and the secrets in which they brought out. And because of the depth of that reality that it leaves itself and its, its blessings to flow into the heart and to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and Mahdi So it has immense realities, immense realities. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. So is it better during the khatam to stay silent or recite aloud? Yeah, when we're talking about these realities, these are people who are trained, they made their tafakkur, they made all their contemplation, then everybody can judge where they are. If you didn't make any contemplation, didn't make any connection, didn't make anything then no you have to do it loud. Because you have to do the zikr, you have to hear it, you have to scare away the different beings that are around and so it has its own blessing and the people around you to do the zikr. But as you're practicing and meditating and your meditation is stronger, your connection is stronger, it's something you wouldn't even ask, you don't even need to. It's like you want to take the, the system off, offline and you begin to fly. So it's not something you would ask, you would know that in your energy you just don't have the energy when your lips are moving, the energy comes when your state of death. When you don't move there's not a tasbih in your hand, nothing. You're just holding your connection with your heart and your soul and the rest of your soul is out doing its zikr and that's when they become uh, in a state of hal. They enter immediately into a hal and the shaykh has to be trained in that as a result of that hal and that energy they begin to dress the energy of anyone who's watching, attending, anything. It's dressed from the, the soul of the shaykh, inshaAllah. Mm -hmm. As Salaam dear shaykh <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, The other night I was doing tafakkur and my body heated up intensely, then I had so much energy I couldn't move or sleep. This frightened me. What should I do next time this happens? Continue. That's the energy. <clears throat> a lot of times the energy comes and you go all the way to fajr time, you pray your fajr and you can't sleep after that. That's the divine energy and the divine you know, power that comes onto the soul. 
where the, the sleep is, is not that important but the energy is important, to achieve that energy is important and, and that that's you know tasting from that reality. There's nothing to, to be fearful of and nothing to be scared of, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum beloved Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa how, how do you keep the vigilance over your heart at all times and not remain too silent to people that they feel you aren't normal? Yeah, Khalwa that Anjuman is, is that you're amongst people but in your heart this is all khafi. So these are that's why these practices you have to go step by step not that you hear like a talk and say, I'm going to do this. We're going step by step. So we're going to talk about the principles but somebody may not be there at that level just to start to implement it. This is not sort of hear and do right away. These are the teachings of the ways of Naqshbandiya. So one is you make your connection, make your connection with the shaykh, practices, practice your tafakkur, your meditation, practicing all these things and then amongst people being normal, not to gain attention to them, not to, to, to make them think that you're special or you're different, not to go to the mosque and put a veil over your head and sit with a tasbih, that's all egoistic. This is all very secluded, this is you know that you're in your room doing your practices and nobody knows what you're doing. So that when you're trained, you're trained, you're trained, then you go amongst people they're talking and you're, you're, you're talking but in your heart you're seeing that your heart with your shaykh, with Prophet and keeping your connection, not losing yourself and, and going crazy and wild that the person is like lost, they lost themselves. That's why you keep the level of your ihtiram, keep the level of your respect, keep the level of your character. Those are the, the guiding forces that's showing you that you're able to keep control. Don't enter into discussions that are going to make you angry and wild and, and change who you are. So those levels of testing begin to increase. And then when people are doing different things and you have your tasbih in your pocket then you can stop and do some of your tasbih and zikr that nobody's seeing and, and watching or if you're in your car you do your zikr. But it's as much as to be normal in front of people so that they don't find you to be different and that everything now will become egoistic and that whatever your practices are, are only for Allah and, and for Sayyidina Muhammad not for the benefit of people praising us inshaAllah. Mm. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Dear Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Could you please guide us what is the best things to do as we are approaching Eid next few days? Yeah the meditation, the tafakkur, the inner hajj, see yourself at all the places of the hajj, everything that they're doing, you're doing. So that when, when they're making the tawaf, visualize yourself that you're making tawaf, visualize yourself in your meditation, make yourself to be in the presence of the Holy Kaaba asking, Ya Rabbi dress me from the faiz and the light that are coming upon the Kaaba and you're meditating, doing your zikr, doing your, your salawats, doing all your practices, recite all the du'as for all of the prayers and uh, you're busy. If anyone's following that app you have hours of prayers. If you read just like from Asr all the awrad what you're supposed to recite beginning, ending, in the middle, Fajr, Asr, Zohr, Maghrib, Isha all the way to Tahajjul to Najadi, you would be having so many things to recite you, you wouldn't even be asking that. And then also the app has the du'as, the salawats, so all of this ibadah is right there on the app very easy. So from whatever time restraints people have because of work then you have the different wazifas for each of the salah. You can pray the zohr if you don't have work and do the whole awrad with the which su holy surah to recite for that. It's all on the app. So that's why it's so much ibadah on this app that nobody should ever have a question of what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. They have so much to do there and you should be reciting all the du'as. This is the du'as of Grand Shaykh Abdul Faiz Dagestani, Sultan Rashid, Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, recite all of the salawats. So once you finished all of that then you can ask, should I, do we have anything else? But you'll be booked 
<laughs> yeah, it'd be great, huge amount of hours in, in, in worshipness, inshaAllah will give you more and more and all of us more and more and, and good deeds, good deeds. And that Arafah and the reality of Arafah is the Qurban and the, the reality of Arafah and its sacrifice that, Ya Rabbi that I'm asking that uh, accept my Qurban and that to sacrifice my bad character, what I was not able to achieve myself by my actions and Sayyidina Ammalina and the sins of my actions, Ya Rabbi please accept my qurban and through the qurban to lift these difficulties away. And people contribute to the qurban according to their ability. We have shared qurbans, they don't have to do the whole cow or a whole camel or a whole goat. Based on their ability they can give even to the extent if they don't have those means then go buy food for somebody and give a hamburger to a homeless person. And that Allah accept that qurban, accept that sacrifice and the, the good deed is what's important at this time on those days and those nights. That this is the time in which Allah is making paychecks for Divinely lights and Divinely realities. So that to be in that system that we want our good deeds to be counted. That Allah send out these lights and send out these blessings. And our system and tariqah, we don't wait for anybody to give for us to order. We order the amounts of qurbans for all over the world ahead of time. So we're not waiting for people to contribute, not contribute, we don't care if they do or they don't. The system has already been sent out and the numbers have been sent out and people are welcome to support and they support towards that whole project, whatever is happening and wherever we are doing those programs inshaAllah. But the main thing is to catch these nights and these blessings that Allah dress us and bless us from them inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh Last night my brother saw a white cat while waking up from sleep. He put on the light but it was still there, then it went to the balcony and vanished. We live on the sixth floor. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. Maybe it was a moment jinn coming to, to, to check on you. But yeah, alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, What do you do if you feel like there's so much to do but you can't find the time? Time management inshaAllah, there's lots of things to do and then you put it in importance just like for work. You make a spreadsheet and put a time management chart together and say, I'm going to do this at this time, this is a free time, this is a free time, free time and then you manage yourself and organize yourself. Islam is all about discipline and tariqah is, is even more stringent discipline. So then again time management, make a spreadsheet and say, this is the time I have to drive, recite your salawats at that time. This is the time I'm driving home, recite the dhikr of Allah at that time, make your istighfar at this time. I have a couple hours on, on TV I'm going to make istighfar, I have a couple hours with my family at this time I'm going to recite this. So the basic is to manage your time and then stick to it. Don't leave everything for night time and falling asleep, then you fall asleep and you miss the whole system inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.